Much has been said about the federal and Alberta Social Credit Party. However, there was a second independent allied Social Credit Party in BC. In fact, it all began with the two BC Social Credit Parties. Leading up to the BC Social Credit Party, BC politics were splintered. There were a lot of farmer parties, labor parties, copycat parties, and independent ones. So it may not come as a surprise that in 1949, there was a social credit party and a social credit league. Each of these parties claimed the other was the copy, and neither of them had an official leader. By no surprise, neither party was ultimately able to win more than a handful of seats. In the next election, they would unify under the social credit party and put their independent origin issues behind them. However, people were getting very upset with the status quo. BC simply had too many parties and every single government was some sort of coalition of parties that would work together to make sure each of them would get the most out of the election. This was the case when the conservative and liberal coalition of government removed the first past the post and replaced it with runoff elections. In this style, the bottom party would be dropped off of every ballot until the winner received or 50% of the vote. A modern version of this would be the single transfer ranked ballot that is used in Ireland and Australia. The thought of the Liberals and Conservatives was that their voters would choose one of them as the second on the list of potential parties over the Socialist CCF party, which was gaining momentum. By being able to pool their voters together, they would be able to perpetually stay in power forever. What they didn't realize was that the second choice voters for CCF voters was in fact the Social Credit Party. When the second ballot was cast, the Social Credit Party had won the highest number of seats in BC, with the CCF coming in second with one less seat. The Social Credit Party did not even have a leader, and had no one who could be sworn in as Premier. The party frantically chose W.A.C. Bennett, a former Liberal who sat as an independent to be the leader. This was almost two months after they won the election. It also represents one of the largest periods of time in Canadian history in which the old government stayed in power while waiting on the new government to be ready. Everyone felt this whole thing was a farce, a mistake of the system. This led to unanimous approval from all parties to revert to the old system of election, and on April 10, 1953, all opposition parties voted against the first confidence measure, the budget. This led to an election two months later under the old rules, which favored the Liberals. The Social Credit won a majority government. People found their new government refreshing and were sick of the old parties. The Social Credit Party in Alberta had been doing miraculous things, turning things around and people were willing to accept the brand for the results. Almost 20 years after Social Credit was elected in Alberta, a breakthrough had happened in British Columbia. Alberta was part of the brand. The party leader, W.A.C. Bennett, was born in B.C., but lived in Alberta for much of his life under social credit rule. Although he never considered himself a follower of the underlying philosophy, he had respect for how they managed government and wished to bring that to B.C. He had wanted to be the leader of the Liberals, but was willing to settle as Premier of the province. W.A.C. Bennett is one of the longest-serving premiers in the country. So when you see the reign of the social credit in BC being as long as it was, it was due to the popularity of W.A.C. Bennett. He would lead the party to seven consecutive elections. W.A.C. Bennett is one of the longest serving premiers in the country. So when you see the reign of the social credit in BC being as long as it was, it was due to the popularity of W.A.C. Bennett. He would lead the party to seven consecutive elections. W.A.C. Bennett was well aware that provinces can't implement social credit philosophy and shifted the party to the right and became a populist. The anti-CCF factions of the province left the Liberals and Conservatives to join the social credit. The party's core had become a combination of the two old guard parties. Bennett also made himself Minister of Finance, the biggest ministry in government. He believed in maintaining a tight purse, only ever paying for expenses his government could afford. This kept BC debt-free, but also made major investments in modernizing BC. He referred to his method as pay-as-you-go. Despite a tight purse, major investments were made. He invented BC Hydro, BC Ferries, BC Rail, the Bank of British Columbia, 
as well as a large number of hydro projects. For education, he created the University of Victoria and Simon Fraser University. He became a member on the national stage and signed international treaties without Canada. He gave the people what they needed instead of what they wanted, and they rewarded him for that. His reign would end in 1969, when the newly formed NDP was able to win under the leadership of Dave, of Dave Barrett. By this point, W.A.C. Bennett's charm had faded, and he was simply an old man. He was seen scowling at other party leaders. He was seen as being just too out of touch with young people. Rumors spread that Bennett was so old he would have to retire as soon as he won and hand leadership off to someone else. A brawl broke out between NDP supporters and social credit ministers, of which eight of the ministers were severely injured. The tone of the country was also changing. The Red Scare in the US was over, and the fear of the communist spies was ending. People were looking to open up peace and diplomacy with Russia. Having hockey games with them was very common now. So when he said socialist hordes are at the gates of British Columbia, it fell on deaf ears. With the loss, W.A.C. Bennett stepped down from politics and helped his son, Bill Bennett, take his seat over. At the Social Credit Convention, Bill, who would have been 41 at this point, was made the new party leader. The anti-NDP supporters left other parties to support the Social Credit, and young Bill Bennett was able to take power in 1975. The, the, and specific- you know, Jack, it, it, it doesn't haunt me because I think people uh, want governments that uh, are accountable, that uh, lay it on the line, uh, show them what uh, services they can give and what the cost is. I, I think what they don't trust is politicians that make a lot of provinces, promises and then hide when they get into financial trouble. But he- However, unlike his father, bad times were ahead. Inspired by American fiscal conservatism, Bill believed in slashing public services to balance the budget. Despite trimming spending, he brought the World Expo to Vancouver in 1986, the SkyTrain, and BC Place. But a lot of the capital programs of the government were full of corruption. A coal project that he invested in cost roughly a million dollars per job created. By 1986, he simply was no longer popular, and his anti-socialist rhetoric had basically fallen apart. He was under investigation for insider trading, and the party fell. It needed to be replaced. He was forced to step down and was replaced by Bill Zander Zalm. World-class city greets the world, but Vancouver's success will not be measured during the few months of Expo or in buildings left behind. Our success will be in the permanent jobs we create and the lasting impressions we share with our visitors. The nonpartisan association will create the economic climate for these jobs and make the most of Expo's opportunities. Vancouver needs Van der Zam and the nonpartisan association. Zalm had promised to end the confrontational style of politics that Bill Bennett had preferred. He would instead focus on improving BC and moving the country forward. He immediately promoted the entire backbench to become ministers and put Bill Bennett's MLAs to the backbench. He was able to make enough alliances to win the election with almost 50% of the popular vote. However, scandal would plague him as well. An investigation discovered that he had a conflict of interest with the sale of some of his properties and was using his position in government to set up meetings and opportunities for the buyer. Zalm left in disgrace, but had shifted the party from fiscal conservative to social conservative. Rita Johnston would take over the party and be premier for half a year before calling an election. The fiscal conservatives jumped to the VC liberals, splitting up the right-wing vote. The NDP would prevail, and the social credit would disband. The party had imploded. The social conservatives would move on to support the reform party, and the fiscal conservatives would support the VC liberals. The social credit party had served its purpose, and like all things, went away when it no longer served its people's interests.